Hey, it's Cannon. Welcome to OHP Uncut. These are our raw, uncut, unedited interviews from Open House Party. And my name's Cannon. And today we got Thomas Mann. What an actor. What a good guy. Grew up in Dallas, uh, where I spent a lot of my time and my career. And he talks a little bit about the audition process, which wait till you hear about like how savage it is. You think regular job interviews are crazy? Wait till you hear what it's like for actors, putting it all on the line. Uh, so we talk about that. And we did this interview right around Easter. So we covered some Easter stuff. And of course, his new film, Chariot, that's in theaters now. Thomas Mann on OHP Uncut. Click that subscribe button. That's how you can win a virtual meet and greet with your favorite artists. We do those from time to time. We only choose from subscribers. So just click subscribe and you'll be entered to win. OHP Uncut, Thomas Mann. Let's go. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Cannon. Thomas, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm sitting here. Uh, it's the Easter season, enjoying some peeps. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's so are you a, a peeps guy or a non-peeps guy? I'm a peeps guy for sure. Yeah. But I'm like the actual peep, not the bunnies. I like the actual, the <laughs> peeps because the shape of them is so much more satisfying. It really is. I bought my daughter this big, giant, stuffed peep. And oh, she one big let it go. She doesn't even care that I exist anymore. She just wants that animal in her life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it a stuffed peep or an edible peep? It's a stuffed peep. I mean, she she's almost two. She can't quite figure out how to make sense of marshmallows in her mouth yet. She tries to swallow them too soon and yeah. kind of chokes on them. We have 30 minutes. I'm going to show it to you. Right. Okay, cool. Oh, God. Here it comes. Well, that's actually a lot bigger than I was expecting. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> it is like the size of a person. Can you blame her for falling in love with that? No, of course not. <laughs> so how's it been going? Working on uh, Chariot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we worked on it beginning of 2021. But yeah, now it's finally coming out. The movie is like truly a trip. And um and that's okay. You know, you don't, I, I don't think it, it's a very, it's not literal and that's a good thing. And, um, but yeah, it's sort of about reincarnation or what it brings up these questions of like, who were we in our past lives and how does that, uh, you know, what are the implications on our present lives and our future lives and, and does love transcend our current, you know, place and time. And can we find these souls that we've, been in love with once and, and, you know, in our later on and, and different forms and lives and, um, you know, obviously very heady topics, but the movie itself yeah. is a very contained story and you can sort of just go on that ride and, and you don't quite have to dissect it all, but, um, but those things are definitely there to unpack for sure. How did the audition process go for this? Cause I know about some of your past auditions and I want to talk about those, but how did this one go? This one, well, actually, I didn't have to audition for this one, thankfully. Um, so that's always a blessing. Um, I was really lucky. Yeah, Adam just um, sent it to my agents, and then I read it. And I had, you know, been sitting at home for a year, like everyone had it. Like everyone, right. Um, and and this was just so bizarre and kind of dark and unusual that I was like, I, I want to see this come to life. And I wanted to be a part of it. And so it came at a really good time for me when the world was so weird and dark and I just needed to do something weird and dark to kind of make sense of it. And so um, that's when, when the chariot came along, but I didn't have to audition. I just said yes. And then, and then miraculously, John Malkovich also said yes. <laughs> and I even had to double check. I was like, so when you say John Malkovich, you mean like like the real John Malkovich. Like the some John like, Malkovich. Some yeah. guy with where like the name is spelled slightly different and he doesn't look anything like him. Um, <laughs> but he's like, no, I, I swear. And then I got there. I'm like, I'll believe it when I see it. So I didn't even know it was him until the day I got to Little Rock, Arkansas, where we shot it. And, and how was him. he? And he was so great. Such a delight. Like I, I was intimidated, you know, because he's an icon. Yeah, how can like, he not be? Your favorite actor's favorite actor. So I knew that, like, you know, I had to be on my A game, basically. I didn't want to be the weak link, and I didn't want to screw him up. And so I just, I came prepared. And um, and then after our first rehearsal together, I knew it was going to be fine. 
uh, he was so, I guess, welcoming um, and, and yeah, and just wanted to make the movie the best it could be. And, you know, the, the conversations flowed very easily and it was, you know, he made me feel a lot better basically after the first day, I was less nervous after that. Yeah. Just yeah. his vibe made you uh, less nervous. Did he have any, uh, like on set when you were shooting, did he have any advice for you uh, on any takes? Did he say, hey, maybe try this or or do this a little more this way? Because I'd be interested to find out uh, how John Malkovich, you know, coaches on set. I know sometimes senior actors can do that. There was sort of like, uh, I don't know, a sense of remove um, because of the character he was playing and the character that I was playing that we didn't want to be too buddy, buddy at first, you know? Sure. So we kind of kept that dynamic. We sort of kept it very professional the first day. And then by the third day, we're just like improvising lines and he's like doodling things on his notepad and showing me during the take. And we're just trying to like make each other laugh and ended up being very, a very playful actor and that was honestly the most generous thing that he could do was, uh, I don't know, just sort of let his guard down a little bit and let me see a little more of his personality. And um, we got along great. And, you know, he he called me a few months after and, and you know, offered me this other movie. I ultimately couldn't do it, but, um, but it was so nice that he thought of me and um, that I was able to... I don't know, I guess make an impression in a good way. Some auditions uh, are difficult. Project X. Um, yeah. Well, that was a very long process. I want to talk about that because just for like budding actors, this <laughs> can be really, really hard and you really have to work hard. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you audition like seven times for that? I can literally remember each different audition. Um, and that's pretty rare. But also that was something where they're doing, they're, you know, they're trying to find new people, new faces. It's different when you're hiring, uh, you know, a cast in a regular movie where, but this is just so specific because they wanted to find unknowns. And I had done one movie prior that wasn't even a big deal and I had a smallish part in it. So, you know, but they even told me that I couldn't audition for Project X because I had done a job before that. And then, um, you know, certain after I think my third audition, they told me it wasn't going any further for me. And, and then after my fifth audition, I think I heard that again. And so it was just, oh, that's just gonna be soul crushing thing. every time. Yes. And so to be told you didn't get the part like two different times and then come back, come back two more times and then get the part. It's like, you can't trust anyone. Right. You, know, you have to just keep your head down and do your job and, you know, and uh, I don't know, and just write it out basically, because if you don't have really auditioning and being in LA and, and throwing your hat in the ring, it's like an endurance test. You know, you have to be, you, you can't get down on yourself and you have to stay as confident as possible and, and hope that someone is eventually going to be like, you know what, you're the guy. And, you know, it's rare, but but it's a numbers thing. It like, you know, it's so stupid to say because it's like very cliche, but it's, that's the difference between people that work and people that don't is you got to stick with it. What's the most um, discouraging or hurtful thing someone's ever said to you in an audition? I got feedback. My manager got feedback on an audition that I did a long time ago and it was pretty upsetting. Their feedback was not the Thomas we've seen before, and I was like, who's the Thomas you saw before? Like, <laughs> was, I Carly. <laughs> who is this amazing actor you remember? And like, why was I so bad this time? <laughs> and, you know, usually the thing is you can't be great in every audition. Sometimes you're not going to be prepared or your heart's not going to be in it or you're distracted with other things going on in your life and you're not able to give 100%, you know, on that day or you're stressed about traffic to get there and, it's just, there's so many factors that it's so hard to do a great job in an audition that, you know, you, you really shouldn't be hard on yourself. Um, that's the best advice that I can give anyone. Where did you grow up? Dallas. You grew up in Dallas. What part of Dallas? Richardson. Okay, cool. I lived in Dallas for a long time. So I guess I can ask you, what's your favorite taco place in Dallas? 
Taco Cabana. Like yeah, Taco Cabana. good choice. Yeah. That I mean, I mean that's uh, that is a Texas sort of chain, but but I feel like it's still exclusive enough to Texas that I can say. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's super good. It's super yeah. good. You get into Whataburger when you live there? I mean, I like it now, but I never I was not a big Whataburger person when I lived when I lived down there, but I was more of like uh like a chicken fingers, uh, like Golden Chick, Chicken Express. Yes. Those are my spots. You're missing one. What is it? Uh uh Raising Canes. Raising Canes. Yeah. <laughs> Raising canes. Yeah, I love love the chicken fingers. Yeah. Do you like watching yourself? You know what? I like to see it. I don't like watching myself. I like to see the movies when they're finished. I like to just see what they became, but I don't generally enjoy. I'm very hard on myself. Yeah. You know, it's, I know that I did a good job if I see it and I'm not like hiding my eyes, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, it's passable. It's passable. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let it. I'll let it be. I won't make them take the movie down. You know, I love it. At the end, we always do something a little bit goofy and fun, and we do five random ass questions. Yeah, please, let's do it. Thomas. Yeah. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it does. People get really upset about that. Why? I don't know. It's delicious. Yeah, I like it too. What's the last song you turned up really loud? Dripanomics by Soul Glow. Ooh, what's that? It's this hardcore band. They're very, they're, they have a new album that just came out and it's very, very good. They're called Soul Glow. The name of that just makes me want to see it. Dripanomics. It's a very cool song. When's the last time you had a good cry? Probably 2020 at some point. It was a dark year. I think we all had a cry in 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't acting? I, I wanted to go to NYU for film school. I wanted to you know, learn to direct. And, um, but now I'm, I'm sort of still in that, you know, in that lane. So I can, um, I hope to, to maybe direct someday. Final question. If you could spend one night with a fictional character, any fictional character, who would it be and why? I would want to just spend a night like in Hogwarts, maybe. I don't know who I'd hang out with, but just, I just want to like roam the halls for a night, you know? God, hell yeah. All That's of Hogwarts is my answer. That's a really good one. That's a really good answer. Well, good on you and good on Chariot, man. And thank you so much for your time and your energy. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Canon.